About four years ago, I lost my mom in a car accident. I'm sorry. Thanks. After she died, my dad needed a distraction, so he spent hours trying to map out the family history. I think he discovered our connection to this place when he found out John Grantham's brother in England was my great-great-great-great-grandfather. I think the story fascinated him. We talked about it a little bit, but I didn't know to what extent he was actually investigating and until he died. He collected documents on the original murders. All about Grantham? Real estate listings, newspaper articles, the letters. I think he was as curious as I am. When I first heard about the two little girls, Karen and Abigail, my heart just broke. It's just one tragedy after another, and no one's doing anything about it. All houses have a history. You don't believe that. Why don't I believe that? Because you're not who you pretend to be. Well, neither are you. What are you looking for? I need answers. From the moment I first read about Grantham, it became an obsession. I couldn't, I couldn't think about anything else. Jack was so ready to tape my mouth shut, she was so tired of hearing me talk about it. I thought for sure I couldn't convince her to come here, but I pitched the idea for Haunted or Hoax. She agreed. But even without the website, I'd still be here. You would? After I heard about the Grantham house, I started having dreams about it. I don't know if it's because of the stories or because of my dad's death, but <laughs> every night I was here. Really? I would walk up to the front door and then the door would open and no one's there. And I just stand on the porch. Nervous. Frightened by the house, but unable to resist it. Next thing I know, I'm in the hallway. I don't know how I got there. I don't remember moving my legs, but I'm there. I want to leave, but I can't get my legs to work. Every ounce of me is screaming, get the hell out of there, but I can't. I'm frozen in this one spot. And then I hear voices saying my name. Little helpless voices. I want to go, but I can't move. So I yell back and ask where they're coming from but they just keep saying my name over and over again. And I realize it's coming from upstairs. At this point, I am so scared, but their voices are just so desperate. I need to help. So I get my legs to work and I climb the stairs. The higher I go, the colder it gets. At one point, I feel like I've just been plunged in ice water. I'm shaking so bad, but I can't turn away. And then the voices get louder and louder and I know I have to hurry. So I run, 
I run and run and run, and as soon as I reach the top, the staircase crumbles. And there's nothing beneath me. So I just fall into nothingness, scream. And then I wake up, covered in sweat, unable to breathe. It felt so real every time. But it was just a dream, right? No. No. I knew what this place looked like before I even came here. Maybe your subconscious just saw pictures and put them together. Yeah, that's what Jack thinks too. But no. When you let us here the first day, even the smell was the same. Where are the voices coming from? Bedrooms, heaven, I don't know. Look. I know it sounds like I should be committed and I don't have proof. Something or someone wants me to be here. And I need to find out why. <laughs>